Civil society organizations working for peace, justice and reconciliation in Uganda have welcomed the trial of former Lord's Resistance Army Colonel Thomas Koyelo for atrocities he allegedly committed during the over two decade LRA insurgency in northern Uganda. Koyelo trials officially kicked off on Monday, July 11, 2011 in Gulu, a district most affected by the conflict in northern Uganda. A visibly frightened Koyelo was arraigned in a fully packed Gulu High Court session. Before a full bench, a panel of three judges of the International Crimes Division, formerly the War Crimes Division. In March 2009, LRA Colonel Thomas Koyelo was captured in the DRC and was flown to Uganda for treatment under detention. The trial day opened with an official opening of the High Court session a guard of honor and a full parade which attracted a wide range of stakeholders including victims, local communities, civil society, government representatives and international participants. Koyelo pleaded non-guilty to all the 12 counts and 53 charges read to him one after the other by the Honorable Justice Dan Akik Kiza, head of the ICD. That's the large on the first fourth day of September 1994 at Abera village, Parish, purpose of County Club County in the District of Northern Uganda, being a colonel, the Lord of the Army, commanded another attack against a group of civilians who were not taking any active part in the hospitals. You seized this trial is as a result of the unrelenting pursuit for comprehensive peace and justice in post-conflict northern Uganda. Civil society actors, local peace activists, culture and religious leaders have played a big role in demanding for accountability and reconciliation for victims and perpetrators within the region. We talk about the truth and reconciliation processes in this country and you know the refugee law project with a host of other civil society organizations, the coalition for reconciliation in Uganda have so far developed a national reconciliation bill proposal which has been made to the justice law and other sector working group as well as other stakeholders to guide the country in terms of seeking a more comprehensive solution to the conflict. We always believe that the LRA conflict was part and parcel of all the other issues that have been arising in different parts of the country. The trial, even though just a first step towards comprehensive justice for the entire conflict and its impact, comes as a limestone for the communities and persons affected by the over two decade LRA insurgency in northern Uganda. Many of the victims and affected population within northern Uganda expressed a mixed feeling and some rejoiced that they as a leap in their search for comprehensive justice and sustainable peace and reconciliation, reconstruction and rehabilitation. Many agonized that trial alone will not fulfill their sense of justice and they called for a more robust measures to be taken to complement the prosecutions of perpetrators. The International Crimes Div the, the Division, will it make sure that the interests and particularly needs of victims of sexual violence and violence against children are taken into consideration and account at every stage of the court process? Because we know that failure to do so will lead to injustice and violation of rights to justice of the victims. We wonder why different standards as under the Geneva Convention and the Rome Statute should be applied in trials for offences committed within the same jurisdiction. We wonder whether this is fair. The LRA also continues to attract civilians and displace populations within neighbouring countries like Democratic Republic of Congo and other parts of Central African Republic and Sudan. On the Koyelo's trial, many believe that although Koyelo is a footnote in the ranks of key perpetrators who bears the greatest responsibility of their suffering, 
Nonetheless, his trial was considered long overdue since justice delayed is justice denied. In the judiciary, justice is not a one-way affair. The victims are entitled to justice. The offender or the offenders are entitled to justice. The prosecutors are entitled to justice. And the community, the public, is also entitled to see that justice has been done. It is the hope of many people that Koyelo will be given a fair hearing to demonstrate this country's commitment to due process and the rule of law. Many victims also expect a full implementation of the entire agreement on accountability and reconciliation reached in Juba, including implementation of traditional justice mechanism like Matoput, reparations, truth-seeking and accountability by both state and non-state actors who committed atrocities during the insurgency. The signal that uh, Kuo Yellow's case uh, signifies is very clear on the roles of traditional justice. Based on uh, accountability and reconciliation on Juba peace talks, you know, Kuo Yellow, in terms of traditional justice practices, should have ordinarily been part of the beneficiaries of what traditional justice does. And we, we should be seeing that his coming out could have meant how can we take him back to integrate within the community. And, and now it is quite a big challenge because under the accountability and reconciliation, Core Yellow was supposed to undergo a process of uh, you know all this stepping on uh, on on the eggs and then uh, because possibly he did something wrong the matterport process should have taken place but all these processes have not been fulfilled and this sends a very wrong signal to the rest of the lower ranking of officers of, of LRA how possible it is for traditional justice to be implemented as agreed in Juba we know that the peace process has stalled but I think it is quite relevant that this bit of, of the role of traditional justice should be seen to be playing a central role as far as reintegration in the community is concerned. Honorable Justice Dan Akik Kiza promised the court's impartiality and commitment to hear all cases brought to court by the prosecutor. There is a legal notice which was signed by the Honorable Chief Justice. It spreads out in clear terms, we are going to follow the Uganda law and the procedure and the rules. So the lawyers who are here, if we have been appearing in murder cases, in development cases, in robbery, that's the law we are going to use. It's only in certain circumstances the legal notes allows us to follow certain procedures in international Tribunals. But that we shall not surprise you. We shall tell you this, this, and this. You have the opportunity to read and see. So there's no ambush. Nobody's ambushing anybody. In any case, Koyelo now has the opportunity to prove his case in court and let justice take its course. But in northern Uganda, justice should not only be done, but should equally be seen to be done. This trial is important. This trial is the beginning of a long road to justice in this country. 